Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you want to learn how to install a board and battened accent wall, keep watching. Let's get started. Last week we installed this beautiful chevron pattern, but we have a few other walls that this client wanted to work with, so we're going to be doing more of a board and batten accent wall on these specific locations. Now there are a few tips similar with these two projects, but there are vastly different starting with the layout. Board and batten accent walls come in an array of different styles and layouts to choose from, but because one of our walls has existing windows to work around, we want to make sure our layout fits the space accordingly, and the best way to do this, in my personal opinion, is just to lay out some painter's tape to note exactly where we want our trim to be placed, and therefore gives us a perfect representation of what the design is going to be in the end. Now that we know the exact layout of this trim work, I quickly remove the painter's tape and proceed with finding all the studs for each wall using my trusty stud finder. As for the trim that we're going to be using, we are using a half inch by three and a half inch MDF paint grade trim. Because we already have a half inch base trim already installed, we're going to keep that in position and install the first piece of trim at the very top of our wall so we can encase and enclose the rest of the trim that we'll be installing shortly. I cut one end of our first piece of trim at a 45 degree angle because we're going to do a butt to butt joint at the very top rim because this wall is so long. But that's going to make life a lot easier when it comes time to filling and making sure we have a nice seamless transition once it comes time for filling and painting. As for securing all this trim in place, I suggest first applying a bit of liquid nail paneling solution on the back side of each trim board first and then installing two inch long finish nails at every location that you find necessary. As noted earlier, this section is too long for one single piece of trim, so I reverse my 45 degree angle, make sure it's at the proper length, apply my adhesive, and then fit it snugly in place. When it comes time to nailing each one of these trim boards, I do nail at every single stud location, but I also nail at the ends whether there's a stud there or not, just to make sure that something is securing that in place while the liquid nails is drying. I know most people are not going to have this type of window arrangement, which is why I'm not going to go into much detail on this, but I did remove the baseboard of these windows as well as cut off all the ends of these window seals because I want to run the trim directly against the perimeter of this window inset. Still to this day, one of my favorite tools in my tool bag is my laser level. It comes in handy in so many different ways, and in this circumstance, we want each one of these vertical and horizontal boards perfectly level at every single location. I cut all of our vertical slats at a 90 degree angle, as well as at the correct length, and do check at every single location, because just because they should be the same height all the way across, doesn't mean it is. We did have about a quarter of an inch difference between one side to the other side on this wall. Before we install this vertical trim, I do suggest removing a slight amount at the very bottom of each board because of the fact that it's going up against the existing base. I want to make sure that it doesn't get pushed out at all due to the fact that that base is caulked. As you install this trim, I suggest installing a couple nails at the very center of the board, then going at the ends and making sure that each piece is aligned properly with the laser level, because it might be slightly off, and if you nail the center of the board first, you can easily maneuver the board as needed to have a perfect lineup with that laser level. My vertical trim placement on this wall was extremely easy to figure out, obviously because we were working around these windows, but on large open walls, it's just about making sure that you have the appropriate and determined size needed between each span, then using our laser level to make sure it's perfectly straight, and then proceeding to our horizontal pieces. 
These horizontal slats can be at any height that you personally want on your project, but for our project, we have a determination because of the windows, of course. So I'm placing at the very top and the very bottom of each window, then setting up our laser level and working off of those first boards because those are our perfect guide points for the remainder of all of these walls. Hopefully on your project you don't have to work around windows because each one of these boards did have to be measured appropriately and then cut to that specific size because of the fact that each section was slightly different and therefore needed to be cut at the appropriate size. But if you are spacing them appropriately from the very beginning, that means each section should be exactly the same and therefore each horizontal piece will be cut at the exact same length. This wall, fully taken care of trim wise. Now we're gonna go over to this wall and it's gonna be the same type of style. However, the different spacing is gonna be the considerable difference between this one versus this one because the space on this wall had to be slightly different due to the fact that we had three different windows. This one is all gonna be congruent in the same spacing all the way across, which I feel will tie in nicely with this whole system in theory. Should make things a little bit easier. The easiest way of laying out a blank wall, in my personal opinion, is taking the overall length, then figuring out how many sections you want, and then minusing out the board width, then dividing that overall length, and guess what? You have your number. If for some reason this math doesn't make sense to you, please let me know in the comment section below because I do want to make sure people understand this layout. However, other than the measuring, the only other thing that's different on this wall compared to the previous is the fact that we have a 45 degree mitered corner in the top left hand corner. And that's because a mitered corner is just going to have a nicer, more professional look and feel at that specific location. However, in the vertical section, we have a light switch that is a little bit in the way. The one thing that we can do about this is to just cut a notch out, but the easiest way to do that is to take my contractor square, square up exactly where I need to cut, and then take my multi-tool to cut out the specific section, then use the sanding tool to sand the inside smooth, but I would also highly suggest taking a router with a quarter inch roundover bit to smooth out all of the outside corners in this section because people's hands are gonna be going in this area and you wanna make sure that this is as smooth as possible. And of course, as long as you measure correctly and they're accurate, it should fit snugly in place and just needs a couple nails. I did give myself about an eighth of an inch of leeway around that light switch because I did wanna have a bit of maneuverability when setting that mitered corner. You certainly don't have to do that, but it does make life a little bit easier in the long run. But now that we have that framework taken care of, I install my vertical slats first and then all of my horizontal slats. And as you can see, this section went up extremely quickly and easily. And I was able to use my laser level that I used on the previous section and just brought that pattern all the way around. We have all of our trim in place and ready for patching and caulking. So the first step is to fill all these seams as well as the copious amounts of nail holes that I just made for myself. This way we have a really nice transition between board to board, and once these sections are fully sanded, you'll barely be able to see the seams. As I have my friend fill the remaining nail holes, I proceed to installing my caulk. And for the caulk, I'm using Duraflex Ultra by DAP. This product does an amazing job at filling all the seams between the trim and the wall itself. And you might not think this is very important, but if you wanna see the difference between a professional looking board and batten wall versus an amateur version, this is what you wanna do because this gives a really nice even look between the transition of the MDF trim comparatively to the drywall. And with this, it has a really nice cohesive feel to it and it feels like it's a paneled wall versus just a wall with drywall and MDF trim. As we wait for those two products to dry evenly, it's time for some prep work. And that involves plenty of painter's tape and painter's plastic. The painter's tape I always highly suggest using is this green frog tape because it has the paint bleed through stopper technology because once it does get wet, it actually prevents any of the paint from getting through. Now it doesn't do a perfect job every single time, but it does do a great job comparatively to your standard blue painter's tape. 
I work my way around all the existing base trim because this is going to stay its standard white. However, everything else is going to be painted a different color. After I have all the base taken care of, I proceed to moving on to the ceiling. Now the ceiling is slightly different, but the only thing you have to worry about is just to make sure that that tape is as straight as possible from section to section that you apply because the paint will be showing any errors that you have within your tape. Taping off the ceiling, the base, the adjacent walls, the windows, outlet plate covers, and of course the carpet might take hours to do, but in my personal opinion, it is well worth it because we are going to be spraying this bad boy, and spraying paint really takes up a lot less time and energy than trying to hand roll this and use a paintbrush through the entire process. Keep that in mind, as well as keep in mind that we need to do some sanding, and by covering this entire area first means that you don't have to worry about any of the dust and debris getting over all of your nice, beautiful things. I did overfill all of my nail holes as well as my seams because I did want to sand this area smooth. And in order to reduce the amount of dust and debris that's actually in the air, I'm actually hooking it up to my shop vac, which is specifically designed to remove as much of the dust and debris as possible while sanding. Also note that I'm using 220 grit sandpaper because that really provides a nice clean finish, but it also removes any of this excess extremely quickly because of the grit. But guess what? Once we have all of our sanding taken care of, it's now time for paint. And for paint, we are using Ovation Plus by Sherwin-Williams, which is also sold at Lowe's. I fill up my paint sprayer, but I also leave a little bit of room for a little bit of water because I do want to dilute the paint slightly prior to applying it to the wall. I find diluting it does help the application process, especially with a Wagner Flexio 3000 like this, which I've done with multiple projects, and it's always done an extremely good job at applying the paint evenly and consistently across large areas like this. I try to apply as even of a coat as possible, but keeping in mind the fact that I do want to get into all those tight-knit crevices, and in order to do so while avoiding any drips along the way, you do want to have somewhat of a light coat across this entire section. I do apply two paint coats to all of these walls in order to have a very vibrant, beautiful finish in the end. The paint color that we're using for this project is called Jasper, which is a really dark, rich green color. And I'll make sure and leave a link in the description box below on where you can find this paint in this paint color. And as always in the description, I will provide tools and materials featured in this video as well. Oh, and in the last ditch effort, we did decide to do a third wall at the very tail end of this project, just to give this entire room this beautiful look and feel. After I had the second coat of paint applied, I quickly removed all of the tape as well as all the painter's plastic around the area. I didn't wait for this to dry because I find that's actually a lot easier to remove this tape in a nice even fashion if it's slightly damp versus if it's fully dried. Now the tricky thing with paint sprayers is the fact that sometimes it gets in areas where you don't want it to get to such as walls. The problem is, is that on this project, we didn't have the specific color for these walls, which is why Datacolor and their amazing color reader easy product is incredible because it does an amazing job at matching almost exactly the paint color within specific genres and swatches of paint that is actually noted in their app. All you have to do when you have the device is download their free app, then connect it to that app, and once you press that little green button, it perfectly matches that exact color as long as you're right up against the said wall, which has an amazing little reader system on the backside. And then once you have the paint color, all you have to do is go to the store, pick up the paint, and then apply it to your wall. Just make sure you have the right sheen. That is always important. This is a really fun little device that I never knew existed until they reached out to me and wanted to be sponsors of this week's video. So if you want to check out this amazing product, I'll leave a link in the description box below and there's a discount code, so check that one out as well. But guess what? Now that we have our overspray taken care of, we are done!
this family room went from very plain Jane to a beautiful, elegant accent wall. And I couldn't imagine a wall that fits this space any better than this. And as you can see, there was quite the vast difference between these old blank walls to something brand new, luxurious, and something that just feels cozy. And I like cozy, and that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. <laughs>